subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Podcast, YouTube, all in the same. Subscribe. Uh, please and thank you. Where are my manners? So we're going to do something we've never done to end the show tonight. We had a question from one of you guys. And it was a question about college football, true enough. But it was a question about real estate. And I was unaware that this had happened today before one of you asked. But one of you asked, what are your thoughts on Lincoln Riley's new home? I just assumed he had moved into a house. I don't, I don't know. I don't keep up with this stuff. But Lincoln Riley's got himself a new home. And uh, that's not where the story ends because I have good news. <laughs> it's, a very pro- it's a very high price and high profile home in Southern California. And we've got some specs on it. So if you're not watching on YouTube, let me hit you with this. Uh, 17.2 million is what he dropped for it. Now that sounds lofty, but look, they were asking 19 million. I have it on good authority. And by good authority, I mean front row or front office sports on Twitter. So he got it for a little bit of a bargain, only 17.2 mil, oceanfront property, not in Arizona, but in Los Angeles, California. Here we go, 13,000 square feet, seven bedrooms, 12 bathrooms, which by the way is more than there were numbers of teams in the Big 12 when he left. More bathrooms than teams. So I'll Brandon Marcello point that out. Uh, five car garage, plenty of room. Got an elevator, gonna talk about that more in a second. Seven fireplaces, not just half a dozen, that's poverty vibes. Seven fireplaces for Lincoln Riley. Got a movie theater, maybe to watch film, maybe to watch Jaws, maybe a little bit of both. You got your tennis court. I watched the video. The tennis court's right there next to a very long gated driveway, wide in nature. There's room for both lanes of traffic on this guy's driveway. Now, you got the tennis court. Of course, you got the putting green, the sauna, the steam room. Nice little 600 bottle wine room. Oh, and a guest house. So me and the production executives were watching the video because a lot of these high profile homes, they have actual videos and you know, it's like a marketing video for the house. I mean, real estate's no joke down in Southern California. Some of the phrasing in that video was just a little bit too much for me. You got to understand, I could be a billionaire one day. And I'm probably, if I'm, if I'm the coach at Southern California, I'm living in like a, a two-bedroom duplex three or four blocks from the Coliseum. It's just not the way I spend my money. But I got no problem with folks who do spend their money this way. But man, they, they described in this video the upstairs, the third floor of Lincoln Riley's estate as a place where you can end your day with grace and a sense of optimism. And meanwhile, I'm asking you guys, is it beef or chicken ramen that we're eating tonight? But Lincoln Riley's got it going on in Southern California. Now, here was some feedback I got from the staff today. Because I just look at it and I say, well, that's a pretty house. But I don't pretend to be a real estate expert. But Jesse and Colin are. In their, in their uh, downtime, uh, this is apparently one of their big hobbies. So Jesse, you know, he looked at it and he said, what's the functionality of this house? Because this guy's a football coach. And Jesse's looking at the movie theater, and that's great. But I mean, really, how much time are you spending in film? Also, if you're hanging out in a $17 million abode, exactly how eager are you to get into the office every day? Also, and Jesse said, this is a huge no-no for me and my girl. We're never going to have a house with an elevator in it. The upkeep alone. According to producer Jesse, it's just not worth the reward, the risk reward. It's very depreciating in nature. So that's not an asset that my particular staff will want in their mansions when they get a little bit older. Could be one week, could be two weeks from now. But also, you know, I think Colin said he just wants a dull house. He wants his coach to have the dullest house in the neighborhood. He wants his coach to shine on Saturdays, not Tuesday afternoon when he's walking the dog. He doesn't want the mailman saying, whoa, in his neighborhood. He wants the mailman sitting on the 45 yard line cause Lincoln got him tickets going, whoa, 45 to three at the half. Colin wants the dull house and the eclectic coach. Colin wants the coach that grabs the Pac-12 by the throat, not the Southern California real estate market. I would argue maybe he can do both, we'll see. But here's the big question. The big question for pretty much everyone is, what's the transportation situation right now? Because uh, I don't know if you've heard, but traffic sometimes can be a little bit of a chore there in Southern California. Do we have access to a helicopter? That's a huge question. I want that for myself in Nashville, and I live five blocks away from our office, but we're downtown. We're in a tower downtown. So sometimes it takes me a little while to get over here, and I can see our office from my parking garage. So how's Lincoln Riley getting there? Because the last thing Jesse, Colin, and myself, we agreed that we want is our head coach in standstill traffic on the 405. We're not getting anything done there. 
Maybe talking to recruits, maybe not. We're not getting anything done there. But that's a look at Lincoln Riley's house. I have never done a real estate video, and I don't know how many more we'll do unless we just go stalk coaches outside their homes. But Lincoln Riley happened to have a full promotional video of his house and had several pictures. 17.2 mil down from the initial asking price of 19. I did look it up, and for the record, uh, he had two homes in Norman. And poor Lincoln Riley, by the way, one of them still hadn't sold. And it's, I think, 1.9 mil is what he's asking for it. Just not too steep. Come on now. We got to offset some of this cost at least.